It's Talk Funny, a podcast by Mark Bailey and comics from all over. We ended up in Japan because never mind the dogs who let the black speaker vans out. The Talk Funny podcast from NagoyaRadio.com and Nagoya Comedy. Here's Mark Bailey. And welcome back to Talk Funny. The Talk Funny podcast. We ended up in Japan because we have the body of a great white whale. And that's not legal. Here's Mark Bailey. Hey, man, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? This is my Joe Rogan hey. podcast. Hey. Hey, how about that flat earth? Hey, man. So I'm here with... I hope Joe Rogan contacts us because we love you, Joe. <laughs> we love Joe Rogan. We do. We listen to your podcast all the time. You're. I think uh, Joe Rogan is like maybe number three or number two best interviewer I've ever heard. Yes. Really good. Very good. I think because he has no ego, basically. Did I mention that I kickbox? <laughs> <laughs> Except for that. <laughs> If, <laughs> MMA, yeah. if anyone, but he said it on his podcast himself. He said that he said I don't care if people don't want to listen to his MMA stuff; they'll listen to the other stuff. So he just talks about whatever he's interested in, and it shows. And he's got, I think he's got, he's got fans on the MMA side. He's got fans who like his talks with comedians. He's got uh, also uh, the other like just authors, and yeah, it's it's a interesting podcast don't turn this one off but you can find joe rogan's called the joe rogan show it's easy to get on stitcher we're hoping to get on stitcher soon stitcher is an app you can use on your smartphone and the thing i like about it is now this show is not brought to you by stitcher but i do it's a great product it's free it's free on your app it's a free app all i do is i get joe rogan and i get uh, nick DiPaolo. i get a bunch of podcasts on there they just download automatically i don't have to do anything no itunes nothing i just tell stitcher i like this one Put this on my on my queue, and it's like, it's kind of like Netflix. It's just there for you, and it's there if you have Wi-Fi. You kind of at night. I think it's probably loading at night, but I've never had it not loaded, and it's always oh, ready. Oh, that's good. Just any time I want to listen to it. So back to Joe Rogan. He has amazing people on. He has from people from Neil deGrasse Tyson all the way to like you know the kickbox champion of, <laughs> and of Alex Tyler Jones <laughs> and Alex Jones, and he has people Conspiracy that he doesn't theorist. even agree with, like Ben Shapiro, and he has the the Canadian Jordan Peterson, yeah, Jordan anybody Peterson. that's in the news, I mean, he has them on, and he can have a conversation with them. That's what I really admire about Joe Rogan is because I did radio, and I know how hard it is to interview guests because I didn't get to pick my own guests. Maybe he probably does. And but he does it for three hours. Yeah, he does it for three hours. I had to do it for 30 minutes for people, for jazz musicians, and I hate jazz. I hated it. And it was like jazz covers, Japanese people who are playing at the Blue Note. Blue Note is, uh, well, people know this. Blue Note is same in New York and Chicago and Tokyo. Except more expensive probably yeah. in Japan. Except the music's it's better. It's like 7,000 yen for tickets to one of their shows. It's nuts. Or 10,000 yen, which is like 100 bucks US for uh, 10,000 yen. Exactly. Um, 70 to 100 bucks kind of. And so I, in my radio show, I had to interview these people in Japanese, and I had no interest in them. And it's really hard to talk to someone when you have, when you don't care anything about what they're doing. And and Joe Rogan is able. So I know how hard that is. In three hours Pretending is amazing. Pretending to care with Mark Bailey. So Joe would have, you know, he has people on, and he can talk to them about anything. And so my ranking of the interviewers, believe it or not, Larry King was number one. He was the best. And people always say, well, you always ask the same questions. Larry King said that he is listening with the ears of the audience. I used to come on after him. He was a recorded show at my station. They ended with, I'm late, I'm late. I was always late getting to the station. So I'm going like 70 miles. I hope no patrol uh, guys are listening, but I was going 70 miles an hour at 4 o'clock in the morning. It's going, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. I'd like to s stay in chat, but I can't because I'm late. Can't even say goodbye. Hello, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. No time to say hello, goodbye. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. And when I wave, I lose the time. I save my fuzzy ears and whiskers. Took me too much time to shave. I run and then I hop, hop, hop. I wish that I could fly. There's danger if I do to stop. And here's the reason why you see I'm overdue. I'm in a rabbit stew. Can't even say goodbye. Hello, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. And it's wide open. But so that was his theme song at the end, Larry King. But he wrote a book it's called How to Talk to Anyone About Anything. Right, right. I recommend that for any comic or any radio person you want to go into radio. He will tell you how to how to do that. So he's the best, and I think Howard Stern is number two. Howard Stern's very good. Howard Stern is. He said he has he has boring dar. He has boringness meter a meter in his head. And he said I talked to a guest for like four seconds, and if I'm getting bored, I know that I know that the listener is about it's ready to click off. Getting bored. So that's why he changes. That's why he's always talking about undergarments and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's he's like. To change. <laughs> and now let's call one of our fans, or and then let's discuss 
undergarments. So let's get Howard Stern to talk to, talk to you, and don't let him get on the undergarments thing. And then when you talk to Joe Rogan, don't mention anything about man. I'm beat. You know who got beat? You know who got beat? <laughs> yeah. What do you think about that fight, Conor McGregor? Man, Conor McGregor. Man, these uh, I had these we new need ground uh, and pound, baby, ground and pound. These new sunglasses, man. I got these, and they're uh, they're really cool. They come in a box. Oh, you like the box? box. Your box? <laughs> Mayweather. What do you think? It's like the Niagara Falls, the old skit from Vaudeville. It's like don't whatever you do, don't say Niagara. Falls. Oh, right, 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 right. So where'd you go, Niagara Falls? And the guy turns around, slowly I turn, you know, and it's this big, long uh, speech he goes through, step by step, and it gets violent. So with... And Joe Rogan, he can talk about music. He was a number, it was a number one com- comedy. Yeah, news radio. That's right. It was number one uh, comedy show for a while. He was on Fear Factor. Yeah. Uh, he knows, you know, he can talk about anything, but talks for half of the time about fighting. So, yeah. So the good thing about Stitcher is... You can actually, you can put it on high speed. So I put it on 1.5. That's why when I talk to people, it seems like they're talking too slowly because I'm used to podcasts that are going like 1.5. <laughs> so I put them on 1.5, and then you can you can fast forward 30 seconds. So I just fast forward. So he's like, yeah, so we were in Thailand. We were watching the boxing. Fast forward. Fast forward. <laughs> That's and what then they do guy, with Adam Carolla. And then Fraser. And then Fraser. Uh, yeah, I do that all the time. Well, I do that all the like, time, too. Yeah, and then I, so then I usually work out in the morning, and then blah, 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 all right. And then uh, sensory deprivation tank <laughs> and uh, – uh, yeah, no, I love it. I love his podcast, but like I, I, I use the um, iPhone uh, podcast app, and it's similar right. to Stitcher. It's got uh, fifteen. You can advance in fifteen second inter- um, intervals. You, so I, I do that a lot. Do you have to go through iTunes though? It doesn't go through. I, I think Good. it's connected to iTunes, but you don't have to use iTunes. It's uh, an independent. It's like an app on your phone. It comes bundled with every iPhone and uh, basically it does like what you say it downloads podcasts and it knows so for example if you have like 15 podcasts and there's a couple of them that you haven't listened to in a while it will not stop downloading those podcasts to save right. space on your phone so it's pretty intelligent if any fans listening we, re- we love Joe Rogan and please tell him about us we'd love to hear from him I, I listen to him for the guests I mean he's, he's a good interviewer and I like his guests he had the guy from Scientology. Yeah, Miscavige. Miscavige, yeah. the father. Yeah, the um, father. Michael Miscavige or and, something? And that guy, he handled him really well because that guy, I've talked to insane people before and that guy's insane. <laughs> the way he, um, just the non sequiturs and he never gets to a point. And Joe, even Joe Rogan was going like, hey, man, wow, man, <laughs> you really are really on tangents. Because Joe Rogan does it too. It's like, you know, yeah, so I was walking by and I saw this nice tree and then I saw this girl and she became my wife. What kind of tree was it? <laughs> no, the, the point of the story is <laughs> the girl became my wife. But what kind of a tree, man? <laughs> like, can you smoke it? <laughs> and the only, the only caveat if you ever go on a Joe Rogan show is do not insult marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Never insult it. That's right. You know, marijuana is not for everybody, but what do you mean it's not for everybody? <laughs> but I mean, you know, like kids, it's, it's fine for kids. Get out of my, get off my show. It's only been two hours. <laughs> don't, don't, yeah. Don't, don't insult marijuana and don't insult uh, Tony Diaz. MMA. MMA is fake, man. Joey Diaz, sorry. It's Joey Diaz. And M- MMA is fake, MMA man. is fake. <laughs> How not to get invited on the, the Joe Rogan he podcast. Said, he, he said that before he goes, Fear Factor was fake, but MMA is not fake. <laughs> I listen to him. Bill Burr has a Monday podcast he calls. Yeah, the Monday morning podcast. It's pretty short. And then uh, Nick DiPaolo, he might be a little right wing for you. He's, he was on with Colin Quinn on... Uh, what Hard Talk, what was it called? Uh, I'll, I'll figure Colin it out. Colin Quinn. But anyways, so, yeah. So what, I'll, I'll look for it. What do, you, uh, what do you listen to? What other podcasts? I listen like, to him. Wise? I listen to Corolla as well. But you were saying that Corolla, you think he's a bit of a slow talker for you. No, not a slow talker. He... He's off on tangents. He never finishes his sentence. He does go sentence. off on tangents. He'll say like, you say like the traffic. He'll, he goes, yeah, I have a joke about the traffic. So the thing is, it's like, when do you, I mean, like, <laughs> who ever said like when the, like, you know, for example, when you go like, so anyway, my daughter, and then she has this dog, and then it's like, you know, and he's saying, you know, and he has this dog, and it's like, what, at what point do you say we're not going to have another dog? Yeah. That's what I wanted to say what about I, the traffic. What I was always found was funny was... That he would just be so, like, flip with his collars. Like, if you just hang up on people, he just, if something, if someone's bothering him or doesn't like it, he just did not mince words. He'd just hang up on the guy or whatever. You know, Ann Coulter called in one time, and that was... Oh, right, that's famous. She goes, well, your, your, producer, your producer gave me the wrong phone number, and then now I'm running out of time, and now I'm stuck in traffic because of your producer. And he goes, okay, bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yelled at her. He yelled at her, too. 
So it is uh, a tough could, crowd. That's tough, it, tough crowd, crowd with tough Colin crowd. Quinn. That was the name of it, and that was on the air for, um, I think it was in in the early two thousands, pretty much. It was pretty cool. It was kind of kind of like Bill Maher's show. Yeah. I liked it. It had both sides. They had some really cool guys on there. They had Greg Giraldo, the late. Greg late, Giraldo was great. Late great uh, Greg Giraldo, shame. and Patrice O'Neill. Patrice O'Neill, O'Neill well. was also, also late, amazing. Late great. They had some you know amazing people on there, and Colin Quinn was able to. He and Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary was on there a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They both were able. They were they were kind of the first anti PC guys that would say stuff that that like the Hollywood guys would go like, oh wait a minute, you can't mm-hmm. say that. Because they never got on, they didn't get on Saturday Night Live a lot, because you really kind of had to be in the crowd and you had to make jokes that the producer that Lauren Michaels, Lauren Michaels wanted, and Lauren Michaels would play video snippets of comedians and their um, audition tapes, and if his mom didn't like it, she go like, "I don't like that one. He talks dirty. I don't like him." Yeah, his mom would go, "Wow, Ixnay, Ixnay." On it doesn't the, matter. You to get to Lauren, you got to. Yeah, go I don't like mom. that. I don't like that Gentile. He's not funny. I don't like the way he looks. You know. <laughs> I wish Mom. they would do that. I wish they would do that with the guests. Yeah. So and then uh, so Bill Burr is good. Gilbert Gottfried has a podcast. Oh, really? Which is amazing. But does he do it in the voice or does he do his regular that's, voice? Well, he the fact that he has a regular voice is a secret. You didn't hear it from me. Oh. He always does the voice, the real voice. That I mean, his his. Let's roll back the tape. Get yeah. out the scissors. So he, cut that out. I've heard his real voice, and you only hear it like if he leaves a message for you or something. And Howard Stern has heard it, but you know his real voice is kind of like, "Hey, um, hey, it's uh, Gilbert. Um, yeah, I forgot my keys. It kind of sounds like Michael Jackson. Sorry, Gilbert. <laughs> he's like, hey, I forgot my keys. <laughs> eh? <laughs> I can't do the. I I used to be able to do Gilbert Gottfried. It'll, it'll come to me in a minute. But it's like that's uh, tough. That's that's a very hard voice to do as well. And he he's got to like, it's kind of like visualizing there's something in your behind that's crawling up. You know, <laughs> like yeah, he will, Affleck. I'll have it if I can right? hear it. If I hear a snippet of it, I can do it. He has a sidekick on for his podcast, and they generally talk about old TV shows and obscure movies. Oh, like it's a mad, 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 mm-hmm. mad world. He had Adam West on before Adam. Yeah, Lake he Grade. passed away yeah. recently. Huh? He had Dick Van Dyke on. Dick Van Dyke, wow. Amazing yeah. stories. He's married to like a woman who's like a third of his age or something. Isn't he married to like some 33-year-old woman or something? And he's like 90 now? Yeah, I have a really good joke that I can't use because it's a clean show. But about, well, I guess she likes his first name, <laughs> you know. Clean show, people. This is a clean show. You have show. to figure it out. Yeah, no, he's got a, um, he's got his wife is like insanely young. But anyways, good for him. I'm not nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Gilbert Gottfried, they have these, they have these quizzes on obscure movies. Let me see if I can get a bit of his voice. People don't know Gilbert Gottfried. I stayed as an old friend, and they were able to communicate. And then the door. And then they were able to communicate. That's why he gets the big bucks. And Affleck. You don't. Affleck. But you I've, can't say Affleck enough. But uh, the thing, if you notice, when he's on, it's like he can't talk and keep his eyes open at the same time. Yeah, he's going to squint. Squinting his eyes. So that's what I listen to. Gilbert Gottfried's something like amazing podcast. Um, I'll have to look up the uh, title while I'm doing this. Who else I listen to that are comedians? Joe Rogan, the guy, the comedian, he always talks about how Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz. I tried listening to that. I can't get through much of it. Um, Yeah, man. Like, he's got this... He, he did apparently what he was doing is he was doing these videos every morning where he would go outside basically his apartment and smoke his first joint of the day and then do these like I, I guess it was uh, not YouTube videos but what was the one the, the you remember they vine I guess it was vine oh. you could record up to 60 seconds or something or I don't know if it was vines or what he was doing something like that for a while I've, I tried listening by the way Gilbert Gottfried's amazing colossal podcast and he does oh, it all okay. in the annoying voice, and it's actually pretty funny. And he has amazing uh, trivia on there, and it's really interesting. They have his favorite story is Milton Berle. Do you know this story? He, the phone book thing? The coffee table thing. Danny Thomas is the coffee table. Okay. And then Milton Berle is the endowment story. Oh, I don't so, know that one. Right, there's a clean show, but if you just say Milton Berle, he, he will start making jokes. He's like, 
He's not as big as he used to be, you know, and this kind of stuff. Because uh, apparently, he, and the, all the rumors are that Milton Berle was very, very gifted. I see. And you can't, you can't say Milton Berle. He Berle, was the hedgehog of his day. Yeah, to Gilbert Gottfried bef- <laughs> without him cracking up. And the other one is Danny Thomas. Um, Danny Thomas. Make room for daddy. Make orders. room for daddy. Wasn't he a parent? Wasn't he in real life? He was like a nasty man. Yeah, that's why. He was like a horrible person, but he played this like really nice guy. 